thank you lord we worship you jesus oh we wait on you jesus we wait on the holy spirit thank you lord father as we go lord into your word help us oh lord to find different dimensions that will be a blessing to us today in the name of jesus what will expand and help us and strengthen us and make us wiser that is what we we'll receive today in the name of jesus for we are prayed in jesus name and all the people will say let's have our six philippians chapter 4 verse 13. The message says that whatever I have, whatever I am, I can make it through anything in the one who makes me who I am. Hallelujah. The Amplified says that um, I have strength for all things in Christ who empowers me. I am ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses inner strength into me. I am self-sufficient in Christ. That is, Christ is my sufficiency. Can I hear you say, Christ is my sufficiency? Come on, don't get tired. Say, Christ is my sufficiency. Say, Christ is my sufficiency. Say, Christ is my sufficiency. So, woe to that man that believes or thinks that he can do anything or can do everything of his own accord. Hallelujah. Not one of us, no one of us can do anything of their own accord. Hallelujah. So, one of the of overcoming in all things is to know that we can do
life of Jesus Christ. That explosive force was not part of his life. Glory to Jesus. So you must have an understanding that being in Christ Jesus is not a cosmetic thing. If you are thinking being a Christian is a fad or a facade, then you have missed it in life. Hallelujah. So being in Christ Jesus is not a cosmetic thing. It's not religion. Glory to Jesus. When you accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, there's a life that is released on your inside. That life is called Zoe. And that Zoe life, that is the kind of life that actually works things out in your life. Glory to Jesus. It repairs your life. It enables you. It empowers you. It enlightens you. Glory to Jesus. That is the kind of power that we are talking about. So they are enabling graces. We call them grace. We call them, you can call them charity. What I'm trying to say is that when you are united with Christ, not just being a follower of Christ, but when you are united in Christ, that there are things that come from Christ that comes to you. Glory to Jesus. But that place cannot come by just professing. So you must move away from professing. You must move away from professing, from shouting, from saying that you are a Christian. Glory to Jesus. Now, in the last ele- election, I saw so many people that they were fighting. You know, they were fighting. Um, APC is the one that will do things. PDP is the one that will do this. Um, 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 Labour Party is the one that will do things. Uh, this is what and what and what that will do that. And you see, the issue is that the people that are fighting don't actually have a relationship. Are you guys here with me? They don't have a relationship with the people that they are voting for. Praise the Lord. Sorry, has the life stopped? All right. So what I'm saying is that, please, I don't want you to miss this point. That you are supporting a presidential aspirant does not mean that after you support them, that they will take them, that they will take you to their house. Glory to Jesus. So Peter or B will not take anybody to his house. But the noble will not take anybody to his house. Atiku will not take anybody to his house. Those ones are just professing their, their love. And they are ready to die. Glory to Jesus. Now, that support is not the kind of support, that is not the relationship that we have with Christ. Because every one of them, we are partakers of the divine life in Christ Jesus. So Jesus is more than a presidential aspirant. If he were a presidential aspirant, he would have enough rooms. He would have, he would have enough accommodation for every one of us. Glory to Jesus. So what we are saying is that being united in Christ, it infuses power into you and I to be who he wants us to be. What I'm saying is that Christ is still standing with the government from this time and then to the end. As long as the government is standing, glory to Jesus. As long as the government is standing, you can see the government of Christ. You can also put down your flag of that. You will be the center of that army. You can take the spirit. Everything you want to do, 
should start with God. Don't get the strength of God. If you read this in the chapter 3, he says that he says that the, the, he says that the power, the power of God was revealed for everyone who believes in him. Then he sat down with him. He made it by the way. He sat with him. Let me say you are not alone. If you make it, you will trust him. He sat to him. Let me say you are not now. You are trusting him. Glory to Jesus. So whoever, however you walk with him, you see, people need a bed to live in. He is safe. He will make it possible that you are going to go to bed. But most of the Christians who are Christians have no sense, no desire to have Jesus walked with them. That's why Paul was different. When Paul came, Paul was a student. Paul needed something to teach. The guy was not yet ready. He did not just pray. Most of us, we are not ready to be trained. We are not ready to be discipled. The Bible calls it discipling. Glory to Jesus. You should be ready to be discipled. You should learn. You are born again, you are a Christian, but you are still reasoning like somebody who is a natural man. You are still trying to work out things yourself. You are still hustling. That word also, U H U S T L E, hustle. There's no hustle in the Bible. Praise the Lord. There are only laborers and harvesters in the Bible. And you are an harvester because Jesus has done everything for you and I. Glory to Jesus. So what we are saying is that is that is that we can start because we, because you are made into the image and likeness of God. You are made after the image and likeness of God. So God cannot make you. You are not trying to perfect yourself like the devil. Are you guys here with me? Bonner boy didn't make you. Ira Star didn't make you. Whitney Houston didn't make you. A politician didn't make you. A government injunction didn't make you. What somebody is saying didn't make you. That somebody is bullying you and saying things to you. That is not what you were used to make, to be made. Are you here with me? He said, I have formed you. Before you even... He said, I have formed you in your mother's womb. Some of us, the dreams God gave us, God put it in us before we were given birth to. So before you saw the light of the day, God already was... Well, God was mindful of you. So you must let this enable you. You must let this strengthen you. Because those are the things that are carrying me. But when you expect people that you have done favor for to show the same people to you, and they don't, leave them alone. Let God's judgment be part of that. Don't get angry when people don't show you favor. Let the God that has created and called every one of us, let him be the one to show you favor. 
Are you here with me? Nobody under heaven. You should not hold anybody under heaven that they are the ones to be a blessing to you. God that created everybody can sort you out. And he will sort you out in the name of Jesus. So increase and, so increase and growth does not come via a structure that you've created around yourself. But it helps. Are you here with me? This, that, that growth itself, that increase you want and, and growth, it is not the structure you created. But the structure will help attract the power of God. And I will explain to you. You want to wash clothes. You carry 10 pieces of clothes. You bought soap. You, you got water. You, even if you put it in a washing machine, the machine does everything. You, are, you, you will still be the one that will, that, that, will bring, that will bring it out of that machine. Have they created a machine that will pick your clothes and soak it in? No. You put it with your hand, right? Then you set it. See, somebody say, uh, the scientists are very smart. They are smart, but they are not as smart as my God. Because my God gave them those senses. You still need to put the settings in. It's the settings that determine how your cloth is washed. Then you bring out those clothes. Probably you just iron them or something. Okay, let's say there are machines that can iron, wash and iron. Would the machines put the cloth on your back? Come on, talk to me, guys. So don't let, don't let what you are seeing. Don't get paternalistic towards what you are saying. And what I mean is that don't get too emotional with the things you are seeing in the world. Because somebody has a car or has what you don't have or has a building does not mean those are the things that is comforting them. No. No. They are getting their source. They are getting their strength from somewhere. It's not the car. It's not what people have that's giving them joy. Is something else is giving them joy that is possessing that car. And so that's why you see young people, when you buy a car, that car can, that, that car can actually bring you issues. Last week I went to check our car and, you know, check the hand, check, check this and all that. And when they priced it, that, when, when they priced it, they, they, they gave me, a, it was like an hospital. They said, change this, change that, change, change the absorber. The two absorbers is bad. The new one, this one is this one, that. The tire, they were like, I was like, wow. So the car that, that, that gave joy, if that car was giving me joy, if it now goes spoiled now, then that means that, that, that car that would now make me what? Sad. No, we don't get our joy from the things we own. You get your joy from your who now? From the person that made you. From your maker. So there's a growth that is productive. And there's a growth that is retrogressive. You see that thing. That growth. Whatever makes you feel bad. It's not a growth. It is not. It's just a placebo. It, it just makes you feel good. Alcohol. You take alcohol. You look good. You look sweet. You are free. You get home. You feel bad. You take amp. You're free. After a while, you feel bad. Glory to Jesus. So, your structure, structures aid you receiving power. Hallelujah. Let's check 1 Kings 18. Quickly now. 1 Kings 18. Let's, let's look at, um, let's just look at um, structure there in, in the most crudest of it. A structure is just a form of our something has been fashioned and how it can actually assist or help you to achieve your intention. The structure is not the the structure is not the vision. The structure is what aids or helps you to achieve. So structure can be changed. Hallelujah. Are you guys here with me? Nobody is a permanent joy giver. Nobody is a joy giver. Nobody is infallible. Are you here with me? No son, no daughter, no wife, no husband. There's no one that can supersede who God is in your life. When you understand that, you understand life. Ah, this person left. Oh, as this person left now, I'll be poor. Um, who told you that? Do you know who God is? 
They imprisoned the man for years. Somebody has came and made him a president. Glory to Jesus. They put a man in a hole for him to die. Somebody came and sold him out. Then he went to serve somewhere. And from there he became the most powerful man in the country. Who told you they imprisoned another man for 27 years because of what he said? Mandela. He came out and became the, the, the most powerful man upon the face of the earth in Africa and in that nation. He became one, one of the most influential men globally. Why are you thinking so? Why are you thinking that your life is over? Because you don't have a house. Because you don't have a car. Because you don't have an iPhone. Because you don't have friends. Because you don't have good jobs. Because you don't have finance. Why will you let finance determine how you feel about God? Why will you let finance... I mean, why will you make you determine how you feel about yourself? So, when, so when the money comes, you are, you are not saying God is good. So God is not good if there is no money. That tells you that you are not growing. You didn't grow. You have not grown. You never achieved anything. What you had before was pseudo growth. Praise the Lord. Some of us, we are not growing. We are just baby Christians speaking in tongues. Believers think because they speak in tongues, they are growing. I said again. That to speak in song does not mean that you are growing spiritually. Even witches can speak in tongue. I watched somebody on TV. They caught him. They said he's a they 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 caught a military man. They said the military man came to try the man of God. So they so they told the military man to 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 be jumping in the church and be doing exercise. Then 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 they, 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 they now prayed for the man. They now told him to speak in tongue. It was that day. You need to know that speaking in tongues is a gift. A gift. You didn't work to get it. Are you guys here with me? It's not a rank. Speaking in tongues is not a rank. It's a gift. It's a tool. Your tongue is not a... This tongue... This tongue, you didn't work to merit it. God gave you so that your tongue receives food and takes it to your throat. And your teeth is to bite. <laughs> so the way your tongue and your teeth is, speaking in tongues is a tool in the spirit realm. So stop equating your speaking in tongues. Somebody says, ah, I like his tongue. His tongue is rich. People pretend. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. First Kings 18. 18. Give me 18. I think it's 18 now. Are you guys been blessed? I want to stay with God this evening. There's a growth that will produce in your life. But when you start saying that your life is not producing, you didn't actually grow. You copied. Are you guys here with me? Because now there are plastic plants. Are you here with me? There are plastic plants. They are not real trees now. People actually buy fake trees that look like real trees. So you feel that, ah, oh, this is a beautiful tree. It's actually a plastic plant. There's a place in the US where you can go and snap with, with a celebrity because, because they made the molded statues like that. So when you snap with them, when you take that picture, people actually think that's the real thing. That's not the real thing. So many of us, we are not growing. There's no actual growth in our life. We are just copying growth. We are copying tongues, copying message, copying scriptures, copying the work, copying songs. Somebody wrote a song. Uh, I, Jehovah is good for me. Jehovah is good for me. Somebody go and steal that song and sing uh, Holy Spirit there for me. Oh, Holy What's the difference? You copied. There's no originality. 
You need to grow for yourself. You need to grow originally. Glory to Jesus. Verse 1. And it came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah. In the third year saying, go present yourself to Ahab and I will send rain on him. Now, God presented that word. You see, you see the scripture? See, after many days, the word of the Lord came to who now? Elijah. So many of us, we don't want to wait. We just want to move. It's only a child that will move when God has not spoken to them or him. You are using emotions. You are using emotions. You are using emotions to chart your career. You are using emotions to determine where you will travel to. You are using emotions to determine who you will marry. You are using emotions to determine the cost you will do. Don't you know that if you live with a drama, if you live with a drama for 10 years, there's a tendency for you to say, I want to be a drama. If you live with a pastor for 20 years, there's a tendency for you to think that I, I want to be a pastor too. Glory to Jesus. We need to grow from within. As Pastor Nika said last week, living what? Living inside out, not outside in. Most of us, we are living outside in. Copying. Copying. And the Bible says not to copy the customs and the cultures and the behaviors of this world. But be ye transformed. Be ye metamorphosed. Be ye changed. By the word now? By renewing your mind after the word of the Lord. It is the word of the Lord that renews your mind. Not the word of man. Not the habits of man. Not the gifts of men. Not the songs of men. It's the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord. And the word of the Lord came to Elijah. And the word of the Lord came to David. And the word of the Lord came to Paul. And the word of the Lord came to Peter. And the word of the Lord came to John. And the word of the Lord came to, to, to Esther. And the word of the Lord came to Deborah. What word of the Lord is coming to you? No, that's not what is coming to you. What is coming to you is, and the beats. And the beats of Ella Nicola came to you. I learned of a, of a musical artist that after she, she does an album and she wants to do another album that she goes to hide. That she will go and hide, that she will shut herself away. She will go and hide somewhere. Shut herself in and get inspiration from God. Get inspiration then come out and, and release a different album. You re-engineer yourself in the place of the spirit. You don't know that the person who is fashioning you, the person, the I mean, the person that is sending you forth as an arrow is God. Glory to Jesus. The person fashioning you is who? Is God. We are allowing the world to dictate how we grow and what we do. If it pleases God for you to do something, do it. If it pleases God for you to wait for five years before you become a multi-billionaire, do it. Why will you rush into becoming a millionaire and you rush and you rush in and you rush out? If it takes God that you should learn business for 10 years so that you can know all the pitfalls, then, and then after that, then you blow. Any blowing that is that is less than five years of when you start a business, go and check it. It will crash. It's not a prophecy. It's what I've learned from people who started business. Every business takes a different turn after five years. And even after five years, there's a ten year. Ten years. But you start a business one year. <laughs> you start a business one year. And you're already thinking that uh, God should make you blow. Blow? What are you blowing? Can you contain the blessings that God will bring to you? One young guy bought a car. He said, no, school guy. I just bought a car. He was my carpenter. I just bought a car and the battery of the car now had issues. So he packed the car. He was looking for money to buy a battery. Because when he got the money in lump, he went to buy a car. Praise the Lord. But he didn't have a battery. So he was looking for money to buy a battery. So if you use all the money you have to buy an expensive car, how will you run your business? If you, you have 10 million, you are going to buy a formatic. 
a car informatic. We are supposed to do business and buy a car of a million naira and put nine million naira plowed into your business. The cost of your business, everything of your business, everything is just 30 M. You are now removing 20 M to buy a formatic or, or just buy a, a fine car. So your car is more expensive than your business. When they valued your car, it's more expensive than your business. When they valued your shoe, it's more expensive than the books you are reading. When they valued your clothing, your clothes are more expensive than the books you are reading. You keep buying clothes every month, but you don't buy books to study. After a while, you see what happened to you is that, that what you should have gotten in the first, second, third year, when you spread it, when you get to the tenth year, you will be sent back to that first year to come and get it. May you have time to be able to do that in Jesus' name. Say Amen. So don't jump to level 10 when you are seeing level 1. Growth is gradual increase. You don't rush to grow. If you rush to grow, you rush to crash. Because when you grow, you grow bit by bit. So that as you add level upon level, that level will come together, will be solidified. Glory to Jesus. Somebody did a business and, and he made... 45 million. He now went to build a house of 30 million naira. So he was left with 15 million. 15 million now got plundered via business. He now had to go and sell the house. So he now came back to what now? To square one. May that not be your portion in Jesus' name. I said, may that not be your portion in Jesus' name. As a young man, you have saved 5 million naira. You want to get married. Why will you spend 5 million naira on your wedding? For crying out loud. You want to impress people to come and eat. People that don't even know you. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. We are talking about what? Growth that produces. There's a fake, there's a fake growth going on now. If you look at all our sisters now. 99% of most of the sisters in church, they are all using weak. Weak. I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm not saying that everybody's augmenting. The person you thought was fat is not actually as fat. But that cloth they are wearing has shoulder pads. Under that cloth, they have used something to tie their tummy to be flat and enhance their weights. There's a makeup covering what you are seeing. That brown lens is not actually brown. Their lens is actually black. So they are attracting suitors by actually pretending. And I'm not saying it's wrong. But the day that young man discovers that you tricked him into marrying you, that is the day the marriage starts having issues. So you don't actually have a flat, you don't actually have a flat belly. You actually use something to hold it in place. Then during the wedding night, when you lose those belly, it was unleashing the dragon. And the man saw belly everywhere. Belly everywhere. Belly everywhere. Glory to Jesus. Let him see the belly he wants to marry. Don't augment it. Hallelujah. As a word for somebody. Glory to Jesus. Scoot to verse 20, 20, 20, 20, um, 26. Are you there? Look at verse 31. Now, this is a story about Elijah fighting with um, the prophets of Baal, you know. And he said he should call them and everything. So see what Elijah did. He created structures that attracted God's power. Are you there? First Kings 18 verse 31. From verse 30 says, Then Elijah said to all the people, Come near to me. So all the people came near to him. And he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken. And Elijah took 12 stones, according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, to whom the word of the Lord had come, saying, Israel shall be your name. 
Then with the twelve stones, he built an altar in the name of the Lord. And he made a trench around the large enough, large enough to hold two, two, two seers of seed. And he put the wood in order. Come and say in order. Message said that, message said, he laid firewood on the altar, cut up the ox, put it on the wood, and said, fill four buckets with water. Drench both the ox and the fire. Verse 34. Then he said, do it a second time. Do it a third time. He said, do it a third time. And he did it a third time. So the water ran all around the water, and he also filled the trench with what? With water. And it came to pass. At the time of offering of the evening sacrifice, Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that you are God in Israel, and I am your servant. And I have done all these things at your at your what? Come on, talk to me. At your what? At your word. He did it at God's word. You can never sustain the miracle you have until you do it at God's word. God is not a magician. If he gave you a miracle through God's word, you need to sustain that miracle through what now? Through his word. You don't like mathematics. You cheated in mathematics. You are now saying you are a mathematics teacher so they can get a job. They now employed you in an international as a mathematics teacher. You cannot teach math because you cheated in O level math. That's what's happening to us. That's why believers are running elder skelter. We are not actually growing. We are copying these things that we do. We are copying the customs of the world. We are copying the customs of, of you are not growing yourself. Glory to Jesus. I've done what you asked me to do. Verse 37. Hear me, O oh Lord. Hear me that this people may know that you are Lord God and that you have turned their heart back to you again. Verse 38. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the bond sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and it licked up the water that was in the, in the trench. Now when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they said, the Lord is God. The Lord is God. Hallelujah. Look up everybody. Everybody look, look, look at me. If you are at home, listen to this. He put all the structures. He sang. He could dance. He could do all the yo-yo-yo in church. He could do everything. He did all those things. But he called on God to help him. He fasted. You have done everything. You have fasted. But he said, God help me. He said, let these people know that you are the God of what? See what the Bible says. It says, then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the bone sacrifice, the wood, everything. You see, when you are assiduous with growth, when God's power falls on you, it consumes all the artificiality in your life. Come and say, I hear. It consumes the lust. It consumes the crave for sin. When you are serious with God, when you put structure in place, there's fellowship time. There's praying time. There's Bible study time. Listen to message. Fellowship with God's people. Be in service with God. Be in tandem with the Holy Spirit. There is, there is. God falls down. God's power falls down and consumes the weaknesses in your life. But when you are pretending, you are copying growth, what this person said today is what you go and copy. What this person said is what you copy. You are not actually growing. When you are called to come and preach, all you share is what's well, what somebody has shared. You are not getting your own revelations. Are you here with me? You see, the word of God has the logos part and the rema part. The logos is the, is the part that informs. But the rema is the revelation. That's what transforms. Are you here with me? It's the revelation of God's word in your life that helps you to stay endured. When others are running elder skeleton and say there is a casting down. But because you have heard the word of the Lord, you say what now? There is a casting up. There is a lifting up. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. When men say there is a casting down, you say there is a lifting up. Because you have heard superior what? Information. We are here because we have heard superior information. Are you here with me? I'm a pastor because I have heard superior information. Do you understand now? I didn't travel to Lagos. I didn't go to... Now, now, being in Lagos is not wrong. It's not wrong. But for such a time as this, I didn't take the offers that came because I had a superior revelation from God. When God tells you something superior, stay in thank you for now. 
Stay in the learning for now. Stay in Lagos for now. You see, when God tells you, move to Lagos, and you are still rubberabing in the learning, something got wound for you. May that not be your portion in Jesus' name. One man shared his testimony. He said he traveled out of Nigeria and he traveled to the U.S. He said, and he was a citizen. He's a citizen. He said he got to the U.S. He said things were difficult. He said as a citizen, he became a security guard. He said things were so difficult that he had to relocate from, from the U.S. Came back to Nigeria. He said he was now working in this country. He got a good job. He said things were tight. He said, he said as a branch manager, he said as a manager, as a regional manager in the bank, they told them to go and start looking for money. They turned him from regional manager, from 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 from, from, from the branch head. They turned him to go and start doing marketing job. I mean, if I mean, I mean, I mean, if Pastor Inka didn't know what God has called her to do, she would have taken a new job la, la, last week. They they called her for a job and and she went there and they said they want her to do this job. She said, sorry, sorry, I can't do it. There must be sorry I can't do it. How can you take it? Somebody who is a child, who is a, who, who is a child accountant, a finance manager somewhere, you now say you want to give them an, an executive marketer. Even if they are paying you five, 500k to do what is beneath you, should you do it? So, a lot of people are doing what is beneath them because of money. You see, when you take money to do what is beneath you, eventually, you have any problem. Because when you do what your grace cannot carry, then you fall from what? Come on, talk to me, guys. Fall, fall from grace. People fall from grace when they do what God has not called them to, to do. Yeah. May, may you not fall from grace in Jesus' name. I said, may you not fall from grace in Jesus' name. I said, may you not fall from grace in Jesus' name. This time is not enough for me to be able to share a few things. That God would have us here. But I believe that God has spoken to us this evening. Glory to Jesus. We are going to have a, a part two of this. Hallelujah. Let me just share for three for three more minutes. Hallelujah. Are you guys being blessed? Are you guys being blessed? Are you guys being blessed? How does growth comes? Uh, by hearing God's word and moving on it. So power can also be damaging and very wild, if not contained or structured. So I'm not saying you should not put structure in place. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying structure is not good. I'm just saying that. Just thinking that because you have structure and that's growth. That no. You might have 10 houses, 10 Range Rover and have everything. It can end in one week. I know a very, very rich man. I, I, I saw the picture and I was shocked. Very, very rich man. was so rich that he, you, he was, you, you are not a trained pilot. You, you are not an expert pilot. He now went to fly a plane. Because, because he's very, very rich, he, he went to fly a plane. So when he flew that plane, that plane now fell down. He then fell down. He now became crippled. Yeah, yes. I can never go for a bungee jump. Yeah, but I go up, up, up. They will not tie a rope. They will not throw me. I will not be showing that I'm strong. Why? Why will I be doing what I've not been called to do? I don't want that kind of excitement. The flesh craves excitement. Your spirit should be in charge. When your flesh is leading the growth of your life, you have already missed it. Your spirit should lead that growth. You should hear things from your spirit. God should speak to you. Glory to Jesus. Let me say this and I will just um, I'll just move on. Let me stop here. Let me stop here. It's a good place to stop. Hallelujah. Let's bless the name of the Lord. Father, we thank you. It's a good place to stop. To, 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 to stop. Just thank him. Thank him. Thank him this evening. Father, we thank you for the entrance of your word has brought light, has brought understanding. We don't all the glory to you.